together and pray this to the Lord before we begin our lesson. I am not ashamed. Our lives, we thank Him for helping us learn not to be ashamed. Our lives in Christ. Imagine if a person shared about Jesus Christ and it would be fine and not ashamed. I ask you, are you a Christian? And the person says, yes, I'm not ashamed if I yes. Do you love God? Yes. Do you go to church? Yes. These questions show that they are not ashamed. To accept his word in life. I'm going to show pictures and signs. Never, 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 never. 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 Both good and bad, positive and negative, many different nevers. It's very general. For example, I never get mad. That means the good thing. I, I, I'm never happy. That's not good. That's good. Never. I never smoke. Like that. I never see that. I never thought about that. I never stop. I never run. There are many different nevers, very general, good and bad, right and not right thing. This man, Winston Churchill, some of you, mm -hmm. he was a famous man in England from a long time ago during World War II. A long time ago during World War II in England and in Germany, that area in Europe, they were at war. And there were soldiers, and America went to help England. And people were depressed. And he went to England. He was a speaker. He was very intelligent, and he thought, and he said to the soldiers in a meeting, he was watching <coughs> a spider. He was watching the spider, and the spider jumped up, and it fell down, and it climbed back up, and it jumped over to the wall, and it fell down. And it continued to do this for a long time. The spider would jump and crawl again and again. Finally, it made it to the shelf. And this man went to a meeting with the soldiers. And the soldiers were excited to hear what he would speak about. 
They were watching. And he looked at the soldiers sitting out in the audience, and he said these words. Never, never, never give up. This was short, and then he left. And the soldiers all clapped. And they were successful. Never, never, never give up. They were strong, and they continued. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about the word never. There are many verses, good and bad, positive and negative. The Bible. I'll choose some of these. I didn't have time for all of them. What God never. What Jesus never. What the people never. Very general. God never what? God never Jesus never, the people never, all these are different. Nevers. God and the world are all different. There'll be lots of differences in my view. Mixed up a little bit with the verses. Jesus. One day, Jesus healed a man because he couldn't talk because of demons inside of him, and he couldn't speak. There's just one verse. It's a very short verse. He went to Jesus, and Jesus commanded the demon to come out, and he could speak again. And the people were shocked. The people were amazed and said, we have never seen anything like this in Israel. It was a miracle. Before that, he had healed many others. But the people were amazed to see this in the country. It had always been quiet. And Jesus healed this boy who couldn't talk. He had before had healed people who couldn't hear, people who couldn't talk, but they were amazed. And there's another story where he healed a crippled man, a man who was paralyzed. He was paralyzed and couldn't walk. And he heard that Jesus was coming to the town. Jesus was in town. And people were flocking to see him. And he was laying there. He wanted to go and meet Jesus. And he wanted his four friends to help him. But it was full of this crowd inside and they couldn't get in. It was full. So they went to the roof and they took part of the roof up and they lowered him down. They lowered him down. And people looked up and said they had faith. And was, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. He was talking to the man who was laying there. He said, your sins are forgiven. While all these other people were standing and watching. And the teachers of the law and the leaders, they saw this. And they said, who do you think you are, God, that you can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts. And he said, which is it easier to do, to tell a man to get up and walk or to forgive his sins? And so then they were quiet. This man got up, and he was healed. He began to walk through the crowd. He was excited. 
The people said, they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. The man laying there many years, they knew he had been laying because they had seen him. And they were surprised and they were glorifying God. In John 17, <coughs> did Jesus attend school? Did he go to school while he was growing up? We don't know. How did he learn as he was growing up? His mother and father taught him? Or did he have classes with leaders, priests and Pharisees that taught? We don't know. The verses doesn't tell us. It doesn't explain. But one day when he was 12, he was older and he went to the temple. It was tradition that the Jews, when they were 12, they went to the temple for a celebration because the young boys became men at 12. And Jesus was sitting there and his mother and father had left. And he was answering questions. And he knew the answers. He got them right. He was smart. His father and mother were looking for him and they found him. They looked for him every day if he had stayed in the temple. How did he sleep and eat? He stayed there for three days. And he answered questions. Did he go to school? We don't know. We don't know. But he was ready to become a man and ready to serve the people. And this verse says, what did they say? The Jews were amazed. They said, this man, Jesus, has never studied in school. How did he learn so much? Wow. Jesus himself was God. He knew everything. He knew everything. Jesus knew their language. He knew their minds. He knew everything. He was different than us. He never went to school, but he knew everything. He was humble. He grew up. And he was... Jesus, his mother and father didn't chew him out. But they had taught him the right way. And they were kind and accepting. And he was accepted the cross and was humble. And won us a victory. He was wise and strong. Another making a big mistake. We often make mistakes. We do wrong. We sin. And we do wrong in our lives, and we don't understand. Sin is around us in the world, and we're not perfect. And we do make mistakes in life. And there are Bible verses that help us, many, but I'm going to shorten them. God, does he do wrong? Does he make mistakes? No. Jesus, does he have any wrong? Like Peter, Jesus told him to go away because the devil was in him. No, there's no wrong in Jesus. This is taken a story. God never does anything wrong or accidentally. Never. Nothing. For example, Noah, during his time, there was a lot of sin. 
and people were sorry. Were people sorry they had made mistakes? No. People sinned. And so the flood came. And Noah lived because he was faithful. He built the ark. And he took the animals inside. And his family, there were only eight. The earth was fully gone. God had made everything, but the people showed no respect and no sorry for their wrongs. God had the power, but he made no mistake. People, us, do we make mistakes? <coughs> yes. We make mistakes. We do things we don't mean to. Things happen. Sin. Some people think that it's okay. Sin or bad things. That it's okay. Some tell dirty jokes and they think that's okay. They think it's funny. Different things that people do. They think it's nothing. They live wild lives. They party, they drink, and they think that's okay. But the Bible verse tells us, Psalms 10, 6, those people think bad things will never happen to them. They say we will have fun and never be punished. They think, like in Noah's time, when it flooded, the people thought it would never happen. They partied, they had fun, they thought it would never happen. But it did happen, it flooded. Noah warned them, he preached to them, but they didn't listen. And it happened. It flooded. We think we'll have fun will be nice and good and do things in the right way. And other people think bad things, that that's nothing, and that it's the same, but it's different. We can enjoy and have fun and be happy with things in God's way. They want to do things the world's way and not follow God. Some People, for example, it happened. Tornadoes and fires and earthquakes. Tornadoes and different things that destroy. They think that God is punishing. The Bible doesn't say that. These things happen to both the good and the bad. We're punished in our soul. Our soul you have for all of your life. And it belongs to God and to Christ. And if we separate that and go into the world, then it belongs to the world. <coughs> For many generations, it's been the same. Again and again and again, it's nothing new, it happens. Styles change. When we follow the world, technology changes, movies change, and it becomes a style. Some things lead to danger, and it builds up and it builds up. Like Sodom was destroyed because the sin was so awful, and it led to less and less people, and they were warned. Jesus tells us what we do with sins in our life. All sins that people do, all wrongs that people do can be forgiven. That's good news for us who believe and trust God and change our lives and follow Him. He can forgive us when we do wrong and we continue 
we don't do wrong and then it's finished, but we continue. It's good news. Christ's blood. But any person that says bad things against or refuses to accept the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of a sin that continues forever. This is serious. God can forgive us, but the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus are free. We'll never forgive those who say bad things against them. They will be guilty. We can, if we're guilty, we can change, we can ask for forgiveness. But if our heart becomes hard, if we stay hard, if Paul said, the simple people, the young Christians, always try to learn new teaching, but they are never able to fully understand the truth. They invent things. Many in the world invent things or many different new things. And some don't belong to God. Some belong to the world, some inventions. And some are good and some are bad. And some are confusing. But in the Christian life, we try to learn new things and other teachings. No, the tr we learn that this is of the truth. We understand the right way. Warning us about hell. In this verse, in the Old Testament, there are many verses in the Old and the New Testament. But in this verse, in Proverbs 27 20, hell and destructions are never full. Wow. A long time ago, there were many who went to hell and they were buried and they died, their body died, and then the spirit separated. And they were separated from God. In the New Testament, in Mark 9 48, the worms that eat people in hell never die. In hell, the fire is never stopped. It continues, it doesn't stop. The body, worms eat the body, and they suffer, people suffer. They are separated from God, they are buried, and they are separated and suffering, it never stops. He warns us, a person who never made a mistake, Albert Einstein, this was his saying, a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. We know we have made mistakes. Jesus came to earth and he made no mistakes. Jesus made no wrong. Peter did wrong and made mistakes. Sometimes we learn from our mistakes. If we had no mistakes, then Jesus may we never learn. But mistakes help us think and pray and ask God for forgiveness and to change our lives. It helps us learn. We learn from our mistakes and our pain and suffering. We learn through His Word. God never promised the absence of storms in our life. Storms means troubles and problems and suffering and struggles in our lives. Sin and things in the world that we see suffering in life. But He does promise he doesn't promise us a wonderful life, but he does promise to walk with us 
through them, the storms, our troubles, our problems, our suffering. He walks with us through Christ in our lives. Together, we know we struggle, we have a hard life with us. You may have Jesus in your life. The living water. The story, I'm going to shorten it. Jesus' followers had gone with him to Samaria. The Jews married non Jews, and their children were in Samaria. And they avoided going through the town of Samaria. But Jesus went to the well, and he was sitting and resting. And he had told his followers to go to the store to buy food. It was noon. And a woman came alone. She was a Samaritan woman. And she met Jesus. And Jesus talked to her and said, please give me some water. And she said, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And she said, Jesus said, if you would have living water, I have living water. And he explained, the person who drinks that water, I give, will never be thirsty again. That water I give will become like a spring of water flowing inside that person. That water will bring that person life forever. The woman heard this and she didn't understand it. And so she wanted the water. She says, I have to keep walking back and forth to get water. Please give me some. And he said, go and get your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, you have had five husbands. And now the man you have you are living with is not your husband. The living water was inside, inside that person. It was Jesus himself. Overflowing water. Jesus inside our lives. That continues. Jesus Christ. Jesus lives inside and he is the water inside Jesus Christ. The bread of life. Jesus himself is the bread of life. Then Jesus said, I am the bread that gives life. The person that comes to me will never be hungry. The person that believes in me will never be thirsty. We still eat and drink and we still get thirsty and still get hungry every day. So what's this talking about? It's talking about the word. Jesus inside of your life. You know it and being satisfied with hope and, and life and satisfaction in his word. You eat and drink always. You'll never be satisfied, but if you know Jesus, it's the word in your heart. It's the bread and water that we receive in our hearts where we will never be hungry and thirsty. We're hungry, we look for a right way, a safe life, how to grow, we seek, we're thirsty, we seek, and we know we're baptized into Christ, and we get him in our hearts, and we're safe, safe. Wonderful announcement about God's kingdom. The Old Testament, the prophecy of the church. What church? The kingdom of God. This is long to explain, and I, I don't have time. Maybe later I will do a lesson about this. During the time of the kings, 
of the fourth kingdom, the God of heaven, and set up another kingdom. This kingdom will continue forever. It will never be destroyed. The fourth kingdom is talking about Babylon and Persia and Greece and Rome. A long time ago, they ruled. And in the last, the fourth kingdom, Jesus came and he was born and he died on the cross and he rose and he ascended and he came back to the apostles. And he set up his kingdom, which was the gospel. And 3,000 were baptized, and from then on, it grew. His kingdom is the church, and it continues, and it's never been destroyed. Here we have a building, a church. And this, the church means the body of Christ. None of us are destroyed. We are his church. It came true in the New Testament. Jesus is the head. Believers are his body. The church is the body of Christ. You all are in Jesus' body. The whole world. And he is one. Everyone who comes to Christ is in part of his body, and he rules us. In Ephesians 1, and 23, God put everything under Christ's power, and God gave him to be the head of ruler over everything for the church. He rules us. The church is Christ's body. The church is filled with Christ. He makes everything complete in every way. We are His. We will never die. Is it true? We will never die? That's impossible. Our bodies will die. What does it mean we will never die? Let's read a verse of the Bible. John 8, 51. This is the King James Version. Verily, verily, I say to you, if a man keeps my sayings, he shall never see death. Never see death. That's impossible. We die. We'll never see death. How? Our spirit, our souls, will never die. Our body will separate from our spirit. But if we believe in Christ, we will have life forever, and we will never see death. We will be, our body and soul will be separated. Our soul will meet with Jesus. This word is from the Bible. We learn and we read and we get this into our heart and we cherish this word. And we trust this word and we follow the Lord. And this is the EBD, English version for the deaf. I tell you the truth, if a person continues to obey my teachings, then that person will never die. Our soul and our body will be separated by his word, his teaching. We follow him. The cross. John eleven twenty six. 
and the person that lives and believes in me will never really die. We believe in Jesus. We don't, we, our bodies die, yes, that's natural. Our flesh dies, but our souls will not die. This is good news for us. John 10, 27 and 28. The sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give my sheep eternal life. They will never die, and no person can take them out of my hand. We, he holds on to us. We hold on to him. We follow him. We know him. He knows us. We are his, he is our shepherd. And he calls us. And we look to him and we follow him. And we know him. If it's a different person that calls us, we don't follow him. No. A shepherd knows his sheep and his sheep know his, his shepherd. Jesus calls us and he knows we follow him. We continue to have life and we don't die. If the devil takes hold of us, he can't. God never changes. God's word is encouragement to us to be faithful and continue righteous in our lives. We trust him. The Bible. We live. Things change. People change. Friends change. Work changes. Economies change. But God never changes. His word never changes. He continues always from the past to now and into the future. He will be the same. We as Christians should be honest to the Lord and people. Depend on the Lord. Trust the Lord. And be righteous. Live every day these things and learn. We are in Christ. God helps us to learn. We should never be a flu. He never kicks us out. We stay with him. Never be shaken or disconnected from God. Never be ashamed, but rejoice in Him. Never be disappointed. He helps us and He comforts us, and we trust Him. Never forget the Lord's Word in our hearts. Remember His love. Many, many verses that we can memorize, or we can't memorize them, but it's good to memorize. We know what was sin 100 years ago will still be sin 1,000 years from now. Sin is always there from the past to the future. But God never changes. It's important for us to trust Him to continue into the future. Conclusion. Read the verse in by computer. One ten. My brothers and sisters, God called you and chose you to be His. Do do your best to live in a way that shows you are really God's chosen people. If you do 
do all those things, you will never fail. If you do all these things, this verse, before, just before this verse, there are other verses that talk about faith, love, kindness, patience, all these things. But we continue and we don't fall into sin, but we are strong in the Lord. God really loves all people. He knows all people, good and bad. And he accepts us. Will you accept his love? His love never fails and never ends. Never. His love is forever for all people. Let's join in song. something to add this verse I will never leave you God will never leave you in these verses both in the Old Testament are the same I will never leave you I will never run away from you I will never forsake you it's there Christ is with us, and we praise the Lord for his kindness with us. Let's pray together. Dear our Father in heaven, we thank you for all your blessings, and we praise you for your kindness, and that you show us that you are patient with us, and that you don't leave us, and you never forsake us, and that you care. And we trust you. Teach us as we learn to avoid things and help us to change and follow your way. Save our lives as we cherish your word in the Bible and as we try to keep reading and learning your word every day. Thank you and we praise you. Forgive us through your Son. Be with us as we continue. And thank you for life and hope for the future. And bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen.